Greetings, today is March the 11th of 2024. A couple weeks ago, I shot a video about uh, the passing of my friend John Davis and some gifts in my collection that had previously belonged to him. Some were literal gifts. He gave them to me. Some were things that he gave me a good price on. I had forgotten one. Excuse me. <clears throat> and a few days after I shot that video, I saw one of these pop up in a search for a completely different item. Uh, and it was this display base uh, from The Empire Strikes Back. I did not own this as a kid. Uh, and the one that I'm holding in my hands right now is the one that I've owned since the 90s. And the owner of it prior to that was John Davis. So um, it's a display base modular. A little bit ahead of its time for Star Wars, really. Um, but you can hook the four of these bases up in myriad ways, and then you slide in these um, these backer cards uh, in these little teeth here that holds them in place. So uh, some images from A New Hope, some images from The Empire Strikes Back. For some reason or another, I have two of one card. That's the... Uh, Hoth Battle and the Death Star Trash Compactor. This one is the only one that is Empire Strikes Back on both sides. So, uh, Docking Bay 327, or uh, Landing Platform 327, and uh, the end of the movie when they're watching the Falcon fly off with Lando and Chewie going to look for Han. And then this one is Yoda on one side and the Jawa Sandcrawler sail on the other. And I actually have two of that one, so that gave me an extra option. I don't know if the double one was Davis's, because most of these, they're designed with a crease down the middle so they could go on the corner of the bases. And I have one of each of these that feels like it probably never was bent previously. And then I've got one that feels like it's been bent several times. I think it's this one. So, yeah. That one probably was a different owner. I don't know when or how I picked it up. Probably just one of those days where I went, I know what that is. And they made me a really cheap price on it. So, this was another item that previously belonged in the collection of John Davis. And I have not had that thing out for years. And I'm going to find a place for it. I'm going to put some figures on it. Uh, I got some... Yoda's sitting here right beside me, so they'll probably go on it as well, uh, since it has that one backdrop for Yoda. Another true gift from John Davis, though, would be this uh, Cut and Assemble Emerald City of Oz book uh, by Dick Martin. And um, this was just one of those things that grew out of a conversation we had had. A lot of the times, we would talk about the black hole. Um, so we would talk about, uh, I would talk about this press out and make it book that I had as a kid that I didn't have anymore. And one day he gives me this and I thought, man, that really just reignites my desire to get that black hole. And so when I did get the black hole, when I wound up buying multiples, um, I have two sitting right here. Um, and I gave the third to him, uh, to, you know, say thank you for the Emerald City of Oz Punch Out and Make It book. I also have a Robin Hood, uh, Disney's Robin Hood Punch Out and Make It book that I shot a video on a couple years ago. Um, maybe it might have been last year. So it's when I was working uh, in Mississippi and staying at the the house that belonged to my grandparents. I did a video about it on the red carpet in the back bedroom. Now then, this is new. I didn't receive this one until after Davis had passed. But John Givens brought me this and said that Davis had told him to give it to me. So, and matter of fact, he had it, Dave, uh, Givens had it at his apartment for a while and had kind of forgotten about it. So another thing, when John Givens was helping uh, Davis' sister clear things out, uh, he said, oh yeah, uh, Alex wants these. It's like some two-year-old Stay Puft marshmallows that are rock hard. Uh, my wife's great nephew was over here yesterday and he, He's too. He really, really wanted a marshmallow. <laughs> I kept having to say, these are inedible. You can't have these. You can't eat these. Recently, uh, I bought a couple of Star Wars items on clearance. Now, I resisted buying these um, sort of like scaled down versions. I forget what they're called. Um, 
of items until I saw them go for this one was like 15 bucks. Uh, this smaller vehicle was 16. So I said, yeah, what the heck? Uh, getting the Tidarium there for 15. And uh, I saw somebody use the Ad App from this collection with a um, the vintage. Kenner Micro Collection toys. The Hoth set never had an ad at it. It had an ATST, but not an ad at. And I thought, oh yeah, I might have to get one of those. And I looked at it, and the price was like sixty bucks. And I'm like, nah, maybe I'll wait till it goes on clearance. Maybe I'll, I'll you know. So I present to you one of my newest gifts from the collection of John Davis. And this was an ad at that he not only bought, but he gave it a black wash and weathered it. Uh, so this is a, a pretty neat item, and this will join my micro collection and these other items there. Um, so thank you to John for that. And an item that uh, when they were clearing Davis's apartment out, and they said, uh, who, could, who could finish this project that was left unfinished? Um, John Gibbons nominated me, and they said, okay, give that to him. So it's a paper Jawa sand crawler. Uh, and this is as much as Davis uh, finished before he fell ill. And uh, it actually comes with a razor crest uh, as well. And, uh, well, you want to talk about something daunting? The thought of finishing a work that Davis began um, is, uh, yeah, daunting would be a masterpiece of understatement in that case. So, uh, because he was a professional model builder, um, he would assemble them for people and they would pay him uh, a fee, you know. So every model I've ever assembled has been just for my own enjoyment. Uh, it was, I never did to the quality of what somebody else would say, hey, yeah, uh, I'll buy that frame. So these are the latest uh, um, items that I've gathered that I've said, oh, yeah, that was originally in Davis's collection. Uh, and we'll call them gifts, even though uh, some of them, like the set here, uh, was purchased. And... Um, Hush. Hush. Come here. You got talked about in the comment section on one of my videos recently. They said, is that a Sheltie? I said, yes. As a matter of fact, it is. Say hi. Hi to the viewers out there. So, um, but I would say that one of the topics that uh, John Davis and I discussed more than any other was the black hole. Specifically the droids from the black, the, the robots from the black hole. Um, not, neither of us really felt the movie was as great as it could have been, or maybe they wanted it to be, but the design on the robots was just, you know, endlessly fascinating for us to discuss. And the night that they were clearing, uh, the rest of the things out of Davis's, um, I was working, I was unable to go. And John Gibbons acted as the go-between, and uh, I had seen some pictures that were posted, and I was just like, oh, you know, I, I commented to the sister. Um, I said, I'll be working, I'll be unable to, to attend. She said, oh, I would like to have met you. And uh, I said, yeah. Um, and then a, a day or two goes by, and John Gibbons sends me a photo of a shelf of things that's left at Davis's. And it was all of his black hole stuff. Maybe maybe one model that somebody else had claimed. But the, these were the things that were left. And so they made me a price on them. And uh, I said, yeah. So for the fact that these are all black hole things, I'm going to put them in a separate video. So stay tuned. And thank you for watching.